Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 2. In this lesson, we're on Chapter 3, 3.3, and we'll be looking at the laws of logarithms, sometimes called the fundamental laws of logarithms. Now, as we said in the last lesson, logarithms are the inverse function of exponential functions, and that's the relationship between exponentials and logarithms. There are two special cases uh, that you should know. First of all, if you have log to the base a of a, so for instance, log to the base 3 of 3 or log to the base 5 of 5, then that just gives you 1 for the answer. And the reason for that, if we do left, right, middle, a to the power of 1 is equal to a. Other special case is the log of any base of 1. Now, the log of any base of 1 is equal to 0. And the reason for that is because a to the power of 0 would give us 1 for the answer, no matter what a is. Now, the laws of logarithms, they do correspond to the laws of powers. But because they're the inverse function to uh, powers and exponentials, it does also feel like the laws work in the opposite way. The first of them is if you have a logarithm to the same base plus another logarithm, then that's the same thing as the logarithm of the two numbers multiplied together. So log x plus log y is the same as the logarithm of x times by y. Logarithm of x take away the logarithm of y is equal to the logarithm of x divided by y. The logarithm of something to the power of k, x to the power of k, uh, you bring the k down the front and multiply by it. It's the same as k times by the logarithm of x. And you'll notice in all these cases, you do have to have the same base at, at every step. There is one special case, um, which turns up quite a lot, so it's worth remembering it. Uh, if you've got the logarithm of 1 over x, that means the same thing as the logarithm of x to the power of minus 1. And then using the power law, that's the same thing as minus log x. So the logarithm of 1 over x is the same thing as minus the logarithm of x. OK, let's have a look at a few examples of how these work out. Now, the first thing we're asked to do is just combine these together to get one single logarithm. So log 5 of something, and in part 2, log 2 of something. Uh, have a go at doing this yourself, see if you can make sense. You'll be using that rule first of all, and that rule for the second example. So pause the video, have a go, come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So that's the first question. Very little going on here. It's just using this law, that if you've got the logarithm of one number plus the logarithm of another number, that's the same thing as the logarithm of the two numbers multiplied together. So the logarithm of 3 times by 7, which is log 21. And that's the answer. That's all we want. Part 2, you've got the logarithm of 18, take away the logarithm of 6. So we're using this law here. That means the same thing as the logarithm of 18 divided by 6, using this rule. 18 divided by 6 is 3, so it's the same thing as the logarithm of 3. OK, example 2, slightly trickier. Because of these 3 and the 4 here on the front, so they've said, right, 3 log 2 plus 4 log 2 as a single logarithm. Now, you can't use these two first rules unless you've just got log and log. So we do need to deal with the 3 and the 4. The way we deal with them is using the rule for powers. Now, I'll let you see if you can make sense of what I mean by that. So the first thing we're going to have to do is tidy these up using the power rule and then combine them like we did on the first example. Have a go, pause the video, come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look. So 3 log 7 uh, times in by 3 is the same thing as log 7 of 2 cubed. 4 times log 2, same thing as log to base 7 of 2 to the power of 4. It's using this rule here. Now that we've got it in that form, we've just got log something plus log something else. 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. We can use the first law here. So the log of a plus the log of b, same as log a times by b. So it's the same as the log of 8 times by 16. 8 times 16 gives us 128. And that's it. That's all they're looking for, for the answer, log 128. Example three, exactly the same idea. 
Um, this time we've got three log a half, take away two log one over three. We haven't said what the base is, but it doesn't matter. You just leave it as A. And we're going to do the same thing. So first of all, use the law with the powers to move the three and the two into the logarithm. And then we're going to be using the subtraction law. Have a go yourself. Pause the video. Come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look. So the first thing we're going to do is bring the three inside. Times it by three with logarithms is the same thing as having a half to the power of three. Times it by two, same thing as having a third to the power of two. So that's brought the three and the two into the logarithms, which means we can now use this law with subtraction. So the log of x take away the log of y um, will give you the log of x divided by y. Uh, before we do that, a half cubed is eight, 1 over 3 squared is 1 over 9, and then we'll use the subtraction rule, which give us the logarithm of 1 over 8 divided by 1 over 9. Uh, 1 over 8 divided by 1 over 9, a uh, little bit of fraction work, that's the same thing as 1 over 8 times by 9 over 1, which gives us the logarithm of 9 over 8. That's as simple as it goes, uh, and that is the answer that they're looking for. Okay, example four is asking you to do something slightly different. Uh, it's really using the logarithm laws, but backwards. So starting with this and converting it back to just log something plus log something else. So we've got x's, y's, and z's all mixed together here in the logarithm. And we're going to unpack that so that we write down the answer purely in terms of log x, log y, and log z, and maybe some multiples of those. Now, I'll let you have a go at seeing if you can work out what I mean by all of that. So have a go, splitting this up into uh, a combination of log x, log y, and log z. Pause the video, come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So the first thing we're doing is using this rule. You'll notice there are three things multiplied together here, and that means it splits up into three things being added together. So log x cubed, plus log y, plus log z to the four. Um, they don't want the cube or the power of four. So when they say write in terms of log x, log y, and log z, they do want you to deal with these two powers. So this first thing will become three log x, and this last thing will become four log z. And that is the answer that they're looking for. Okay, part two, uh, exactly the same idea. Um, you've got the logarithm of, this time, a uh, function of x and y combined together. And you're being asked to split that up so that you write the answer just in terms of log x and log y this time. Um, very similar to the last example. Have a go. Uh, pause the video and come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look. So we're going to split up the division using this rule here. So the log of x to the 4 divided by y squared is the same as log of x to the 4 minus the log of y squared. Then we're going to deal with the powers, because they just want log x and log y in the answer. And that'll give you 4 log x minus 2 log y. And that's as far as they want you to go. OK, example 4, same idea again, just a little bit more complicated, because there's more going on here. Um, you've got the log to the base a of x cubed times by the root of y divided by a to the power of 5. So there are no z's. Um, but you do have an A thrown in there, which will be significant when we get to the end of this question. Again, we're going to split it up using these various laws so that you're writing the answer just in terms of log X, log Y, and log A. Um, I'll let you have a go at working your way through that. So pause the video, have a go. Come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. Now, the first thing that we need to deal with is the division, because the division applies to everything here. So using the rule for division, that'll split up into log x cubed root y minus the log of a of a to the power of 5. Um, the next thing we'll do is split this up into two parts using the multiplication rule, which gives us log x cubed plus the log of root y. Now, root y, it's helpful with these questions to write that as a power. So that's the log of y to the power of a half. The next thing we'll do is deal with those powers. So the power of three comes down to the front and you multiply by it. Same with the power of a half, you multiply by it. Same with the power of five, you multiply by it. 
And then the next thing to look at is this little bit at the end here. We've got log to base A of A. And right back at the beginning of the lesson, we said that's a special case because A to the power of one is A. So the log to the base A of A does just simplify to one. So you've just got five times one here. And that gives us the final answer in its simplest form. Three log X plus a half log Y minus five. Okay, different type of question now. Example five asks us to solve an equation which involves logarithms. In order to solve an equation involving logarithms, you're really trying to write something in this form here. We're on the left-hand side, you've just got the log of something. On the right-hand side, you can have something more complicated than that. But you do just want the log of something on the one side equals some function. So the first thing you have to try and work out is how to combine these together so you just have the log of one thing is equal to something. Now I'll let you have a go, seeing if you can make sense of what that all means. So have a go at working through this, pause the video, and then come back to me again when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. Now the first thing we're going to do is deal with this two here. 2 log x, and that'll become the log of x squared using the power rule. The next thing we're going to do is use the addition rule to combine these logarithms together. So we've got log 4 plus the log of x squared. Using the addition rule here, that's the same thing as the log of 4 times by x squared. And now we've arrived where I said you wanted to arrive, where you've got the log of something on the left-hand side is equal to something on the right-hand side. The easiest thing to do is to use this fundamental definition of logarithms here. So the left to the power of the right will give you the middle for the answer. That's what this is saying. A to the power of x is n. So six to the power of two will give me four x squared for the answer. So writing this logarithmic statement in exponential form gives us that. Six squared is equal to four x squared. Finally, we've got a normal equation that we can solve by normal means. 6 squared is 36. Dividing by 4 gives us 9 is x squared. Square rooting that, normally that would give us plus or minus 3. Well, it does give us plus or minus 3. Um, logarithms only exist for positive numbers. So um, you can only find the logarithm of a positive number. You can never find the logarithm of a negative number. Um, if you try and you calculate it, you'll just get error. So x must equal plus 3, it can't equal minus 3, because logs are only defined for positive values. OK, example 6 is the same idea again. So it's another equation to solve. We're going to have to combine the logarithms together so that we've just got one statement that says logarithm of something is equal to something else. Then use this to move on. Uh, very similar to the last example, um, maybe a little bit more work. Have a go yourself, pause the video, come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So I've brought the two logarithm statements together, left the three on the right-hand side. And then what I'm going to do is just change this two here. You do need to have the logarithm of something, logarithm of something. So we need to bring the two into the logarithm, which gives us log of x squared. Once we've done that, we can then use this law here. So the log of x, take away the log of y, is the log of x divided by y. So the log of this, take away the log of that, will be the logarithm of the first thing divided by the second thing. That gives us three for the answer. And what we're going to do now is just go back to this basic sort of definition uh, in terms of how you change a logarithmic statement to a, an exponential statement. So the left to the power of the right gives you the middle for the answer. So two cubed must equal this when we convert it to an exponential statement. That gives us 8x squared is equal to 2x plus 1. Uh, rearranging that gives us a quadratic to solve. Uh, solving the quadratic, popping it in the formula gives us that. And that gives us two possible solutions, a half or minus a quarter. And as in the last example, the solution has to be x equals plus a half because log's only defined for positive values. It's not defined for negative values, so it can't be minus a quarter. Okay, that gets us to the end of the lesson. 
Uh, if you've got the exercise book, then uh, turn to page 56 and have a go at exercise 3C. Thank you very much for listening. And cheerio.